Welcome, Music Worcester fans. Adrian Finley here, speaking with, from California, where he's performing another Rachmaninoff concerto, pianist Ilya Yakushev. Ilya, welcome so much. Thank you so much for having me. And, you know, I think some of our some of our subscribers certainly remember your last appearance here at Mechanics Hall. It was with none other than Keith Lockhart and the BBC um, Orchestra, I believe. Um First question for you. Then it was Mendelssohn, I think, was the concerto. This time in a few weeks, it's going to be Rachmaninoff, the second piano concerto. How how do you approach such works when they could have vastly different demands? Well, being a classical pianist, you have to be able to uh, deal with uh, all kinds of repertoire, starting from uh, Baroque ending with the 20th century, maybe even more modern pieces, and uh, you just need to be um, capable of, of doing uh, either concerto on the spot and do it well, and uh, study the history, study the story about the piece, uh, study the style of the composer. You have to do a whole um, bunch of work, um, preparation work, before you play a concerto. And of course, um, then there's a um, factor of liking the piece. <laughs> and when I was performing with uh, uh, Keith Lockhart, uh, who's actually my, my great friend, um, that was uh, a request of the orchestra um, to present two concerti on the tour. And one of them was actually Rachmaninoff second. And uh, the other one, the other choice for presenters was Mendelssohn's first piano concerto. So it's quite symbolic that I'm coming back to mechanics hall. <laughs> it almost seems like somebody said, you know, we really wanted to hear Rachmaninoff's second also back in 2010. So let's have him come back <laughs> and play Rachmaninoff's second for this time. But I have to tell you that um, that was our first concert of that tour. It was with the uh, BBC Concert Orchestra out of London. And uh, um, I, I always said that uh, this first concert of the tour was probably my favorite concert. We had 15 concerts. Really? That Mechanics, Hall. Mechanics Hall is one of the best venues in the whole country. And the piano that you guys have there, the Hamburg Steinway, is just terrific. I, I hope it's still the same piano. And I think it is. I'm looking forward to coming back to, to the Mechanics Hall. Oh, well, it will be such a pleasure to have you back here in a few weeks, which incidentally is Saturday, May 17th at 8 p.m., and tickets are available online, musicwister.org. But Ilya, so you have a month truck full of Rachmaninoff. This week it's, as you said, the Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini, and in just a few weeks you'll be diving into the, the second piano concerto. You know, just to, going back to the technique question, I mean, how do you physically stay in shape, as it were, when there's such huge demands? You know, Rachmaninoff's writing, uh, volume, you know, 80-something musicians behind you. Well, it's not even a matter of staying in, in, in good physical shape. Um, we're kind of used to this, uh, uh, we meaning musicians we're used to uh playing different repertoire um every almost every week um the the biggest question uh for me is how do you stay mentally stable uh not stable i would say is probably the wrong term to use but you get tired mentally mm -hmm. of, of playing so many different pieces in a row because you know you concentrate so much on this one that you go on to the next piece and you um, concentrate in the next concert with a different piece in the repertoire. Um, and Rachmaninoff concertos are not small pieces, so you, you basically uh, have to manage your time very smartly so that you don't get mentally exhausted from, um, you know, de devoting yourself completely to this one concerto, uh, and it, especially if it happens every week or every other week. You just have to be able to manage your uh, time in such manner so that you don't uh, exhaust yourself mentally. Physically, playing two different concertos two weeks apart or maybe ten days apart is no problem at all. So uh, a question that I ask everyone, you know, we, we know this month is kind of Rachmaninoff month for you now. Um, what have you been doing the rest of the year? You know, what... Um, 
if any of our fans had been following you, where else could they have heard you recently? Well, uh, this season I I went as far as Winnipeg. Um, I was uh, playing Tchaikovsky's second piano concerto there, which is uh, a piece that you don't hear very often. No, not at all. Um, I just played uh, Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto uh, in March with the El Camino Youth Symphony out here, also in, uh, out here in the San Francisco area. I did several recitals. I, I, it, it all depends on what the presenters want you to play, because usually when you come to perform a concerto uh, with an orchestra, you basically get asked to play a certain piece that fits the uh, rep for that certain concert well. And um, I, I, I guess I got lucky to be asked to play two different Rachmaninoff concertos <laughs> in the same month. But um, there were some, some, some years when I would play a lot of Prokofiev. In the beginning of this season, I played Prokofiev's third piano concerto oh. with the Des Moines Symphony and my good friend Joe Junta conducting. Uh, then I went on to, actually, I said as far as Winnipeg, I actually went even further. I went to um, Anchorage. Oh, my goodness. Uh, in the beginning of the season to play Brahms second. Ooh. Uh, and it, it, it's, been a, it's been a busy season with uh, different concertos, some of which uh, were new in the repertoire, like Gershwin's concerto, and after that I played with the um, Cheyenne Symphony Orchestra and my other good friend, uh, William and Trilligator their music director, and um, it's been a busy season in terms of concerti, and also I just um, got signed by uh, this British label called Nimbus, which is one of the major uh, labels in Europe. Oh, congratulations! I consider myself very lucky, yes, and so we're, we're working on um, hopefully producing, uh, publishing more, more CDs this year, but uh, first I have to record the repertoire, and that's, of course... <laughs> also time-consuming <laughs> to take those times off from concerts uh, to, to, to record and to yeah. practice for the new recordings. Yeah, so I, I guess my next question would be, if you could just take us back a few years, um, why New York and what led you to Manus? Was it the teacher you were able to secure? Was it the United States? Was it... New York City and everything it has to offer. It was a good weather. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding, of course, <laughs> but um, it was part of my decision. You're going to be laughing. I was very young when I moved to, to New York City. That was back in 2000. Uh, in March of that year, I came to New York with my dad to audition for two schools, uh, Manhattan School of Music and Manus. And uh, there was a particular teacher who uh, invited me to audition uh, to both these schools, and he teaches with both of them. His name is uh, Dr. Arkady Aronoff. Um, I, I got into both schools, um, and then I uh, decided that Manhattan School would probably be the place for me. Uh, because, you know, at the first glance, uh, the school is bigger, you know, uh, there are more rooms with, with pianos, and I thought, this might be uh, a good place to start. Um, and then Manhattan School didn't like my um, English test score, and they decided that they wanted me to take a, uh, a course at the um, Columbia University, and that cost a lot of money. At that point, I didn't have uh, that kind of funds to, to go to those summer co uh, courses, and uh, Manus took me, um, even though I took my papers out of there. They took me back, and uh, they offered the same amount of scholarship, which was full scholarship. I got ext extremely lucky oh, excellent. to get that. And uh, thank God for you know Manhattan School not liking my cra uh, my grades. What am I talking about? My my English uh, mm. best score. Uh, because if not for that score, I would have not met Vladimir Feldman, who then in 2003 became my uh, like second father and the mentor. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm I'm thankful to to whatever brought me back to Manus in 2000 and um, uh, for this chance to to study with this great master who then became my um, great teacher and and I, I could even call him a great friend. Possibly. 
Oh, excellent. Well, congratulations on all of that, too. It seems, you know, you just got very lucky very early on. And um, then just a, uh, one last question, I think. Could you give us a, just a brief summary of what exactly is the International Keyboard Institute that goes on every year, and how are you involved? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's a great summer program for those uh, kids and not kids anymore uh, who are interested in, um, you know, spending two weeks of their summer in New York with great teachers while listening to two great concerts every day. Um, we run for two weeks in the second half of July at the Manus College, and uh, it's been a very, very successful program. First of all, um, our founder, uh, Maestro Durham Rose, uh, who uh, has been running uh, the festival for for uh, the last 15 years. Uh, he has done uh, a, an incredible job at keeping this uh, festival uh, very, very successful, and uh, the successful grew from year to year. Uh, we have about 150 students come every every year. Oh, wow. And uh, a lot of them come back. So that, that's the, the best response we could get. If people come back to our festival, that means that we're doing something right. But to, to put it in a couple, just a couple of words, it's just a great program for, for those people who uh, take music seriously and plan on, on doing it professionally in the future um, or already doing it professionally because there are so many things to learn in classical music so that we have all range of performance from, from the beginners uh, from young kids, uh, maybe 12, 13 years old, to pro- almost professionals or professionals who are already playing professionally around the world but still want to learn uh, things about classical music and hear these great performers' opinions uh, yeah. who are playing. We have about 25 faculty who come from all over the globe. We have two concerts per day, one, one series for younger uh, performers and then uh, the later series, later in the day series for older folks who are, um, uh, who we call masses. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just it's been a great experience. It's my two favorite weeks of every year. <laughs> and I've been doing this for the last 13 years already. And if any of our supporters were curious about what's going on this summer, what's that website? Uh, the website is, is uh, very simple, ikif.org. I-K-I-F stands for International Keyword Institute and Festival. Uh, and then you just add .org at the end. You'll see the schedule of uh, concerts. You'll see the conditions of the uh, competition that we have at the end of the uh, festival. You have the whole uh, uh, whole range of information on our website. So if, if your listeners or our listeners, I should say, are interested in coming, we would love to see all of you at the festival. It's just a great celebration of classical music every summer in the red in the middle of the summer, red in the middle of yeah. New York City. All right, excellent. Well, Ilya, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you in person here in just a few weeks. And again, May 17th, 8 p.m., Mechanics Hall, Ilya Yakushev and Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto Number no. 2. Ilya, thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me, Andrew, and I'm also looking forward to my time. In, uh, All right, see you soon. Mechanics Hall. Thank you. Excellent. See ya. <laughs>